Talk about Frederick a little bit. So um, Frederick was born in Germany, but mostly raised in Vienna, and he was from a very wealthy family, and his father served in the Great War, and they were German nationalists. They were believers in Hitler. Um, Frederick, on the other hand, was conscripted. He was not a military guy. He was not a follower of Hitler. He was actually more of a Renaissance man, painter. He loved to cook. He loved to be outside. Um, but he had to be in the army or the, face the consequences. So that's what, that's what happened. So she was largely shielded from discrimination growing up. Until she got into the United States Army. Until she decided to serve her country. That's when she was confronted with Jim Crow. That must have just shocked her. It was very difficult. It was um, hurtful and humiliating. It, she had a tough time throughout the Army experience. She was from a prominent um, black family in the Boston suburbs. It was actually very progressive. It was called Milton, Massachusetts. She went to white schools, had white friends, and she was from an educated family. So although she knew about discrimination, she was largely secluded from that. Now, on the other hand, Frederick was from Nazi Germany, and he was from a very wealthy family, a prominent family, and they were German nationalists. Now, although they didn't join the Nazi party, they were um, believers in Hitler and the German Empire. But Frederick was an artist and was incredibly into jazz. And so that had been outlawed in Germany by Hitler. But he snuck around and would listen to it. So he had this impression of African Americans. They were artistic, they were warm. All the things that he never felt growing up in his family because he had a very dysfunctional relationship with his father in particular because he wasn't a military guy. He wasn't into the war. He really was this artistic free spirit. So he saw Eleanor and attached all these feelings and ideas and fell madly in love with her. How did they meet? <laughs> it's a great story, really. Um, so apparently, uh, Frederick, his assignment was to work in the mess hall because he was a, a great cook and an excellent baker. And this is what he shared with his children and his uh, and other family members. He said he saw her when she walked in, and it's like he was under a spell. And then some flirtation started to develop. Did they have any uh, hesitation about uh, developing this romance from the point of view, from a couple of points of view, really? Right. One, I suppose it could be treasonous if somebody found out oh, and, absolutely. Uh, for Eleanor. And also uh, that eventually the war would end and he would be gone. I think it was youthful rebellion. Um, I think they also were madly in love. Um, but they were, they were taking major risks. I mean, here you are, have an American nurse in the army, and he's in Hitler's army. So we are enemies at war. So she could have been court-martialed had um, their romance been uh, discovered. 
And also, it's a collision of Jim Crow and Nazism. Even though we're at war, these are two countries that have racialized laws. So they both were committing crimes. So you really think about, wow, they just, they erased all of that. And so I think, yes, it was, they're, they're young, they're rebellious, but they also hated what their countries were um, putting forth and, and, and selling this racism, because that's, that's not what were in their hearts either. So they started to see each other in secret. He volunteered at the hospital, and they were able to go on these secret rendezvous and, and started a full-blown romance. When you think about two people who would have never should have been falling in love with each other, they found each other, and that's what makes this story to me even all the more unbelievable. I mean, he was a soldier, she was, although discriminated against, she still was an American officer in the Army. So they were committing a crime, really. After the war ended, all of the German POWs were deported. And so Eleanor and Frederick, I mean, you call it youthful rebellion, I don't know, insanity. They knew that they, the best way that they could reunite is if they conceived a child. So they did. So he is deported. She returns home pregnant with the German POW's baby. And their plan worked because he was allowed to get sponsorship and he returned um, in 1947 and they married in New York. They started moving around, having a lot of difficulty getting even leases because no one wanted to live next to them. Um, he couldn't really get a job. So they made the decision that they should move to Germany because he was groomed to take over his father's company. It was terrible. Um, Eleanor was treated badly, his mother was not excited about having a black daughter-in-law and made that very clear. They left Germany after a year and a half and then they moved back to the United States. They first settled in um, some suburbs outside of Philadelphia. They couldn't enroll their son in the school that they wanted to. They were told to go to a black school. So here they were dealing with racism on both sides of the Atlantic, right? and they end up settling in Connecticut where he gets a job with Pepperidge Farm. And there's this community called Village Creek, which is in South Norwalk. It's actually, in their covenants, it's advertised as a prejudice-free zone. So they settled there because it was a community that welcomed mixed race couples. Do you think if they would have met somehow later in life, older, they would have gone ahead and and gotten together, or was this sort of a, I know. a moment of youth? I think youth was on their side, for sure. Um, and not that you're young, that you're not thoughtful, but I do think there is something, um, just there is more wisdom um, and more fear as you get older. You know what this world can be like. So I think it helped them that they um, hadn't experienced that much of life yet. A profound feeling overcame Frederick when he spotted a beautiful, tall black woman. Incapable of concentrating on his kitchen duties, Frederick bypassed the POW waiters and walked right up to Eleanor. He looked her in the eyes, smiled, and said with a German accent, you should know my name, I'm the man who is going to marry you.